practice been so far? Uh, as I said, I think last week, man, I like our group. Uh, really, the, the things that you judge at this stage is to make sure that, that everybody's attitude is right and that they're giving great effort, and we're certainly doing that. And we've been together long enough now that we're starting to establish an identity as a team. Uh, as I said earlier, I, I think we're athletic. I think we're versatile. I think we've got a number of uh, interactive pieces, and now it's just a matter of continuing to figure out the best way for us to be successful. You know what, I think we have more ball handlers. Last year, our biggest issue was, was turnovers. Um, and that's been uncharacteristic for us because typically we've had a lead guard, whether it be Todd Abernathy when I first got here, uh, or Chris Warren, or Jarvis Summers, or Stephon Moody. We've always had a guy that dominated the ball and, and for the most part protected it fairly well. And so for the most part, we, we've, we've been pretty efficient as it relates to our turnover margin. Last year, we just did not have a lead guy that, that we felt comfortable with that was going to do the things we needed game in and game out. Once Brian got healthier at the end of the season, I think some of those things took care of themselves. Now Bree's back healthy, he's in year two. Uh, Terrence Davis, who obviously had a, a monster sophomore year, is much more comfortable in his role making decisions with the ball. DeAndre Burnett, after being in the program now over a year uh, as a fifth year senior, is a guy that, that we trust with the ball. And then you bring in a guy like Markel Crawford, whose basketball IQ is off the charts, uh, who can play a, a multitude of different positions and, and for the most part makes good decisions with the ball. So I, I think overall it gives us a lot of different playmakers on the perimeter, uh, which leads to our versatility. Yeah, I think so. I think there are I think there are opportunities for for Markel to kind of play a little bit of a face four. He's six foot four, two hundred and ten pounds. He's strong. He's he understands how to guard. So there will be times, you know, if if we wanted to put uh, a, a guard oriented group, I could see a, a Brian Tyree, a DeAndre Burnett, TD Kell all together, and then you still got Devonte Shuler who could be in that mix as well as, as one of those four along with a big. We got to be able to rebound. Uh, we've got to find a way to rebound. You know, TD last year got around five and a half a game as a wing. Markel got about four and a half a game. I've challenged them. If we can get 13 between the two, I think it'll give us a lot of versatility on, on the way we want to play. Last year you talked about the next step for TD on the defensive end, particularly with, with the foul trouble he got in. What, where do you think he has come with that? A long ways. He's, he's, uh, he, he's just much more conscious of it. He's grown up a little bit. He's much more mature. Um, we've challenged him defensively, and I think Markel's presence has helped him because he sees how hard Markel plays defensively, and TD's probably playing better defensively than he ever has to this point. Uh, you know, when you when you get to the games and those lights come on, then you know sometimes you you, you have a tendency to, to to overdo things, and I think that was really his problem last year, trying to do too much defensively, and it led to fouls, which uh, which unfortunately took him out of the game and took him out of rhythm. You know, I think every year as you start the season, there there's going to be a lot of stoppages of play. There's going to be different rule emphasis, uh, whether it be hands or physical contact in the post or play at the basket. There's a lot of different things they talk about, and I, and they hammer it into these officials all off season. So it just stands to reason that when when you get into those November and early December games, there's going to be a very very tight whistle. As the officials get more comfortable with the new rules, as the players get more comfortable with the new rules, I think you see better flow. Uh, towards the end of December and most definitely when you get in conference play it's going to be physical as always. Coach, how excited are you about this team this season? Just from the years past, um, what have you seen from the team the off season and the way workouts have been? You know, I, I like this group. Um, I like what I've seen to this point. I think we've got uh, a good mix of, of old with new. As I've said earlier, I, I think we're athletic. I think we've got some size. You know, we've got a, a legitimate seven-footer. We've got two guys in our program, and Dominic Olenicek and Carlos Schielings. And Dom's about seven feet, around 250. And Carlos is about 6'11 and a half, about 255. So two big bodies at the basket that we haven't had. And Dom gives us something from a, from a shot-blocking standpoint. I don't think he's going to do what Reginald Buckner did. And I think Reggie's still in the top five in the history of the SEC as far as shot blocks. But he does give us a real presence because his, because of his length and athleticism, which allows us to do more things aggressively on the perimeter defensively. Are they high? <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I, 
I would assume we would, you know, all, all the preseason mags, I don't, I haven't seen you guys as, as the publisher of any of them, but I haven't seen us any higher than ninth or 10th, which is typically the case, you know, when you, and, and I don't blame anybody. I don't even really get upset about it. It's just par for the course. You know, when the, when the season rolls around, okay, Kentucky's going to be one, two, or three. And you say, well, who's on their team? Well, I don't know who's on their team, but Kentucky's going to be one, two, or three. And you say, okay, Ole Miss is going to be eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Well, who's on their team? Well, I don't know who's on their team, but they're going to be eight, nine, 10, 11, or 12. Well, so it's just par for the course. I, got, I had an idea. What do you guys think? You know, we've always uh, – college basketball struggles with an identity in November for obvious reasons. You tip off, and you're tipping off right in the heart of, of football season, most especially in the South. So I, I, I had an idea that we should do away with preseason polls. And the first poll should be – I think you should do that in all sports, by the way. But I think the first poll should be maybe in early December where teams have played five, six, seven games – and then kind of unveil the initial top 20 based on merit other than, you know, someone's, someone's subjection of, of who they happen to like. What do you think? Did he – was that his idea? Well, I hate to bring that up then. <laughs> Scratch that. No, I'm kidding. I like Tub. I, I, I think around here you, there's still some people that still have some bitter feelings, so I heard. How is Carlos coming along with, with you know, and we had the knee injury. November, December. December. He had he had surgery in December. He heard he had the ACL tear in a really in a in a non-contact drill in practice in early December. Just based on the break and the surgeons and such, the surgery was not until right after Christmas. So he's nine months into this. The difference between him and Bree is he's such a big kid. You know, he's he's 260 pounds, and so with that comes a little bit of a. Uh, a wait and see approach, but he's back full speed. Hadn't missed a day. Uh, he says it doesn't bother him. He's trying to get more confident with it. And I try to remember back when Bree first was cleared to play, which was which was in November of last year in five on five, and boy, how how unathletic and and tentative he was. And for a guy that's been through six knee operations, two ACLs, I, I get that. You know, Bree is much, much improved physically. He, he's he got uh, a lot more confidence in what we're doing just based on his experience. And he's, he has the ability to separate. You know, a lot of times turnovers are because you can't get separation. You're constantly playing in traffic because of your physical abilities or what have you to separate. Now Bree has the ability to separate. Now it's just a matter of him making good decisions with the ball. He wants to be a home run hitter a little too much. You know, he's trying to make the play as opposed to what the game gives him. And that's just the next step in his maturation. But his ability to separate now is, is completely different than really even he was at the end of last year. And he's going to play one some this year. Uh, you know, I think Dre's fine at the one. I, I think with Dre, he played all year with a with a with a torn ligament in his thumb, and then he had some knee problems, and then he had been basically sitting out for a long time. If you think about his track, he he goes to Miami, he gets hurt in the exhibition game or right before the exhibition game, so he sits out all of his freshman year. He plays as a redshirt freshman, and then he sits for us. So in essence, he was sitting two of the last three years prior to him being eligible for us last year and he still got us around 17 a game he wasn't as efficient as he needs to be and i think he'll be the first to tell you that uh, but he's much much improved as well just from the experience and and it's the first time in his collegiate career he's going to actually play back-to-back -back years so what, do you, what do you expect carlos to, to give you this year? you know i don't know that yet i think with all of our front court guys they're they're all competing for for, for their niche on the team. He is a big body. He is a guy that uh, he's got a toughness to him. He can score with his back to the basket. He probably has the best back to the basket game on our team naturally. Now it's just a matter of him getting healthy and him being able to change ends. You can imagine with an ACL, they can only do so much from, from a conditioning standpoint. So he's still in the uh, early stages of getting back into basketball shape. Yeah, you know, and Bruce is a guy that, that we're trying to, to get where we can play Bruce and Dom together, Bruce and Carlos together. But, you know, Bruce came here as a five. He's he's six foot eight, uh, 260 pounds. 
athletic. He can shoot it. But he's if you had to categorize him, he's probably a stretch five, and we need him to be able to play some stretch four. So where does that come into effect? Really only defensively in his ability to guard a four that can bounce the ball. Eustace is a 4-3 that really the opportunity for him this year will be more at the 4. KG's a 5-4. So we've got a number of different pieces. We're just trying to figure out, okay, who can complement one another up front. When Bruce first signed here, Raheem talked a lot about his conditioning to be able to make it through a whole game. Is 260 good or for him, or do you want him to lose weight? Or I, you know what? I, I try not to get too caught up in weight. I just try to see how he can move his feet and because everybody's built so differently. Um, just depending on what I'm hearing from Raheem, and Raheem has had him for the last two years, he thinks he's, from, from an effort standpoint, he's not missing any of his times. He's, he's changing his body. He's gotten a lot stronger. He's gotten a lot more explosive. For him, it's just a matter of, of understanding. He's a new guy in the program. We've put a lot of stuff on him already and will continue to build in preparation for, for our games, which are right around the corner. So right now, he's, he's still thinking and processing as opposed to just playing loose and free. In a couple of weeks, I'll have a much better understanding. But he's doing everything that we ask him to do, uh, and I think physically he'll be fine. I think so. You know, you, you never really know. Again, it's a lot of speculation, but my assumption is Kentucky's going to be Kentucky. As long as Cal's there and as long as they're getting the guys they're getting, they're going to be Kentucky. Uh, I think Texas A&M is going to be outstanding this year. Uh, everybody is anticipating, you know, Alabama. They're, they're kind of the, the buzz team because of this, the class they put together and who they have returning. And then really the, the difference is going to be the back end of the league. You know, you take a team like Missouri who's had their, had, had their struggles for the last few years. Now all of a sudden many people are projecting them to be a potential NCAA tournament team. I would agree with that, by the way, simply based on who they have returning and the fact that they, they brought in a top five class led by the consensus top prospect in the country in Michael Porter. Uh, you know, Auburn is in year, whatever it is, four for Bruce Pearl, and he's got a, a collection of guys. And uh, so you, when you start thinking about the teams that were typically playing on Wednesday night, those are the bottom four, all of those teams have improved themselves. So the back of the league gets better. The top of the league's always been strong. And, uh, and, and the middle, again, a bad weekend will take, take you from fifth to ninth. Uh, two bad weekends will take you from, from fifth to 13th. Um, so that's where I believe, you know, we've been, we've had six consecutive seasons at 500 or better in SEC play. And in the last two, we go 10 and 8, 10 and 8. I think this year at 10 and 8, based on if we can do what we're supposed to in our non-league, it's going to be good enough to get you solidly in the field based on the overall strength of the league.